things to say about. Will somebody please escort Mr. McCarthy to the stage, please? Where's Mr. McCarthy? Peter McCarthy. There he comes. Pete, we're up this end. Pete's an old friend of Michael's and the one that admits it. There are not many left. <laughs> Pete, you got 30 seconds because I've got to go take a leak and that's all the time I've got. It's going to be more than 30 seconds. After that last act, I'm here to talk about uh, Mr. Ojosa's spiritual qualities. I'm a former Monsignor. And I think uh, I can do that very nicely. Actually, Jimmy Desmond uh, is on his way up here, too. And the two of us go back to the very beginning with Ojosa. And he earned that name rather distinctly, as you know. But what we wanted to do was give this quick roast. And as the Master of Ceremonies has said, this is going to move very, very quickly. But I think you've got to put things in a sense of perspective. To do that, I'd like to ask everybody here who goes back to the 1960s with this fellow, raise your hand. All right. Now that'll give you a real sense. Take a look around and see who has the hands up, because this really goes back to the beginning. Well, if they have them alive, there are a lot of people who can keep their hands. That's all right. Thank you, put your hands up. Now, let's go back to the night. Who was around in the 1970s with this, this thing? And now the 1980s. Okay? Well, that gives you a feel for what we're dealing with here tonight. Jimmy Desmond and I are going to talk about the very beginning. Those of you who were here in the 80s, from an association standpoint, 70s, knew an entirely different individual. When I first met him, I was the first person in Washington, D.C. who was conned by Ojosa. I hold that distinction. He found out that I had a house at Rehoboth Beach in May of 1964 and conned his way to Rehoboth Beach with me. I had to pick him up in his conned rental apartment over in uh, Arlington because he couldn't ride his Chevy, right? T-Bird. T-Bird, because it had ball tires down to Rehoboth Beach. I had to pick him up. His uniform in those days was an Arizona State sweatshirt, sleeves cut off, Levi's, high tide marks. Got in the car, got in the car with his expensive luggage, which consisted of a tied cardboard box, one used bathing suit, ratty old towels, and an extra Arizona State sweatshirt. That's a U of A. We what? A U of A. Not U of, no, no. Was, I remember very Arizona, good. Arizona, not Arizona. Uh, he then proceeded to mooch money off me, mooch booze off me. We also have some friends from 36 Lake Street here tonight, Devin Doolin and others. Devin, these people will attest to the type of character we were now becoming exposed to. He was a freeloader in our house. We took him to our first breakfast. We had 18 people in that house at Rehoboth Beach, 36 Lake Street. How many of you remember the Avenue Restaurant, Rehoboth, the old Avenue Restaurant? We all went over there for breakfast on Saturday morning. I didn't know this noisemaker and character very well. I only chatted with him on the way down in the car. The next thing, this poor little old lady. I have your attention, please. This is a very humble and sad story. There's a little old lady who could be a grandmother, probably about 86 years old, who came over to this table of 18 guys who were lawyers, Marines, stockbrokers, and O'Hara. <laughs> she came over and took the order. All 18 of us went around the table and took the order, and she was very patient, very nice. She went back, and she kept coming out with these trays of breakfast. And finally, she put a plate in front of O'Hara, and she took the little silver tin off it. And keep in mind, we didn't know him. But all of a sudden, in this very genteel, nice family restaurant, you heard, please! And all of us turned and looked. Am I right, Devin? We all turned and looked. And we couldn't imagine what was wrong. And he's going in one of his, you know, he, he puts on a tirade, pointing at the plate. 
and we all were wondering what was wrong. And he says, menu, menu, and he's pointing to the menu. And we're all going, what's wrong, O'Hara? What's wrong? And he goes, four pieces of bacon. There are only three here. <laughs> That was O'Hara, and that's what we became familiar with. In those days, you didn't have bars, you didn't have restaurants. In those days, you had the center house at Marine Barracks, which was a social hub. You had the glass house, a bunch of Air Force officers over in Arlington, and you had a million little parties that would go on uh, throughout Washington. But these were the days that we came to know O'Hara and get, got to know him quite well. And what I'd like to do now is... Uh, introduce the other